Hi friends, so we are going to go through my experience. I'm gonna test out the Omnipod 5 with you and see how it feels, maybe give you some of my thoughts and any tips that I learned along the way. So we are going to set it up right now. Okay, so they send you this nice box and you must get Omnipod 5 through a pharmacy benefit. This likely will mean that you may have to go through some insurance hoops because typically insulin pumps are not covered through pharmacy benefit. This will likely require a prior authorization for many insurance companies. That simply means that your doctor's office will need to fill out some forms sent by your insurance company to let them know that you are in need of insulin pump therapy. This will typically be covered for people with type 1 diabetes, and there are some plans that will cover it for type 2 diabetes or other situations. Comes with this fun get started in three simple steps, which is what I like because I am not in the mood to spend a lot of time on this. There's gonna be an Omnipod 5 pod in here as well as the personal diabetes manager or the PDM. Basically kind of looks like a little, it's like an Android phone. And the pod looks even tannier than the dash. I have some dashes, we'll have to compare the size. Quick start guide. So you can do it in three steps or not three steps. It's hard to say. Extra pods. And I will say one of the benefits of it being covered through a pharmacy benefit is that it's going to be a lower cost typically as because you don't need to meet your deductible. And it will also mean that you will not have to sign a contract. So if you do start using this system and you totally hate it and you want to go back to Control IQ or Medtronic, then you will have that option because you're not tied down with a contract. We have a charger in here. Looks like it is a USB-C, which I appreciate. We're all trying to move towards that. <laughs> and then a big manual for all of you lovers of tech and want to go through that together. So that's the box. I will briefly talk a little bit about the Omnipod 5 with you. The Omnipod 5 is Omnipod's version of a hybrid closed loop system. A, an HCL system is when the insulin pump and the continuous glucose monitor talk to one another and make decisions based off of what someone's current blood sugar is. So the pump is going to increase or decrease insulin based off of what the blood sugar is currently being projected by the continuous glucose monitor. Omnipod is a little bit different from Control IQ and Medtronic's version of hybrid closed loop pumps because it is actually predicting what the blood sugar is going to be in about an hour and it is making decisions based off of that prediction. Whereas control IQ and auto mode in the Medtronic pump are going to only be reacting based off of what the blood sugar is currently. This likely means that Omnipod 5 will be a little bit better than those algorithms because again, it's gonna take into account if it sees double arrows going up or, or one arrow going straight up, it's probably gonna give you a little bit more insulin than it would in the other pumps because it's predicting that you will end up in a higher place. Disadvantage to these commercial hybrid closed loop pumps is that we don't know what the algorithm is because they will not release it and they are not required to. Um, that's really frustrating for clinicians like myself and of course the patients too. If we are trying to figure out how the pump works, then we kind of have to make some guesses. We have like a vague idea just based off of what Omnipod puts out, but it is not like a DIY closed loop system 
which is the open source that you can build yourself and run off of older insulin pumps or the Dash system. They obviously are going to release that code because you need the code to build it. And it just released the uh, algorithm because it's an open source and they believe that that is the right thing to do because it is the right thing to do because these things are keeping us alive. So it would only make sense that we would have that information available to us. But I digress. Omnipod 5, we don't, we don't necessarily know how the algorithm works. So there are, there are some guesses for it, but what we do know is that it is predictive and it is really trying to blur the lines between basal rates and boluses. Typically in an insulin pump, you have a basal rate, which is your background insulin, and it is giving a small amount every hour throughout the day to try to keep you steady in a fasted state. Boluses are given as a bolus or a larger injection of insulin all at once to cover above target blood sugars or the intake of carbohydrates. Omnipod 5 is going to ignore the basal rates that are set into the PDM and um, those basal rates will only be applicable when you're in manual mode. So when you are in automatic mode, I think it's called, it is going to adjust based off of what it learns about you when you are first wearing the pump and what it learns, you know, through throughout your, your wearing of the pump. But it will adjust based off of giving you a bunch of little micro tiny boluses and there really isn't much of a basal rate, which I kind of agree with. That makes the most sense to me as a person with diabetes and as a certified diabetes care and education specialist, I really like that idea. I think basal rates can be a bit of a setback and sort of hold people back from having the control that they desire because basal rates adjust very regularly throughout the day and throughout the week based off of stress and illness and menstrual cycles and a bunch of different things. So it makes a lot of sense that we are moving towards this idea of just bolusing for blood sugar fluctuation. All right, let's turn this on. I'm gonna hold it down. It looks very delightful. I never take these off. I don't know, it's like a weird, thing I learned from my family and I think it's totally unnecessary but I just hate having the screen exposed like that. All right it's gonna load. I'm gonna go ahead and get my insulin. I will also get a dash pod to show you some of the size. All right it's asking I am 18. <clears throat> so you're gonna have to create an account. You go to this website or scan the QR code you will need to schedule training with a pump specialist and they will train you via virtual appointment or through a one at your doctor's office or something like that. It will just depend on your trainer and what your needs are. I am actually trained um, <laughs> a trainer for Omnipod 5, so I'm going to set mine up myself. I'm not going to show that part here because I don't want anybody using this video as a way to do that. But yeah, any any questions that you have, please just uh, direct those to your doctor's office and your Omnipod 5 trainer. Okay, I got my settings all set up in here. So we're gonna start a pod just for comparison. <laughs> This is the dash and you want to make sure that you're using the right ones because they do look very similar. And so if you have any extra dashes, you might want to put those away. And then this is the five. Probably not a huge difference. Very similar in size. Remember Omnipod 5, just double check that you have the right one. I'm trying to do this from like a weird perspective here. So, oops. Don't mind me. This is one thing I love about Omnipod is that everything is in one package, unlike Tandem and Medtronic, especially Tandem, where it's just like all, you need like six different things to do a set change. So that's really annoying. Omnipod is super awesome in that. <clears throat> Something to consider is that it will only hold 200 units in each pod. If you are somebody that needs more than that, in a three day time span, you will have to change your pod more often or talk to your doctor about using maybe an off label, more concentrated insulin like U200 Humalog. Again, just being aware that that is off label. Okay, so we're gonna affix the little needle here. 
get your insulin ready. This is new insulin. You don't have to swab the top with alcohol. Honestly, I never swab the top with alcohol, but it's fine. All right, so we got our syringe filled up here. Mack it around a little bit to get rid of those air bubbles, but there's that. You wanna to try to get rid of as many of those as you can. Here's the pod, and what we're aiming for is putting the insulin in there. Thankfully, the PDM will walk you through pod setup. So if you get out of your training and you forget all about how to set up a pod, then it is super duper easy and it will give you step-by-step -step instructions. So that's exciting. Fill with our insulin and listen for two beeps. Like, so cute. And then after you hear that, you'll press next and it's going to try to pair up with the pod. And then it makes these cute little clicking noises as it's priming. So that means that the insulin is going through all the little tubes in there and up into um, towards where the cannula is so that you don't get injected with a bunch of air at first and you're just getting, but yeah, it takes a little bit of time. So, you know, clean up your, your materials during this time. Once you finish with that, you'll wanna get your site ready. <clears throat> You can record where you're putting it if you have trouble remembering where you last placed them and you wanna just make sure you're rotating well. We're gonna remove the tab here. You kinda of have to rip it off. <clears throat> and you wanna check the cannula. See a little hole there. And now we're going to get it on our body. So the thing about the pod placement is it needs to be in line with your Dexcom sensor. I think that is a serious pain in the butt. Um, <laughs> to my knowledge, that was not an issue with the other hybrid closed loop pumps. I'm not really entirely sure what the reason for it is, but like that kind of, as somebody who's a little bit limited on real estate, because I have so much scar tissue from being a pump user for so long, definitely a con for me having to make sure that they are always on the same side. So currently my Dexcom is on my right arm. I'm going to have to place my Omnipod in a place where they can basically, you have to think of it, they have to be able to wave at each other. That is sort of the rule of thumb there. So we're gonna do that. And okay, here we go. So I'm gonna remove the adhesive here for applying to my site. I do not use alcohol because it will dry out my skin too much and I am not at risk for skin infections or anything like that. So I feel comfortable doing that. Of course, do whatever you feel comfortable with or what is recommended by your provider. See, this is where my site was previously. I would have loved to put pod on this side, but since my Dexcom is over here, we're gonna have to pick a spot. So. I may just come a little bit further back. The thing I like a lot about pods is you can really just slap them in places maybe that are a little bit harder for you to get to with a traditional set. Like I would have needed somebody probably to help me out with that one a little bit, so that's cool. Okay, now it's yelling at me <clears throat> because I'm talking too much. We are gonna go in here and we're gonna press the start button. It is gonna ask, sorry, I just ate stuff. Is pod securely in place? I'm gonna say yes, it is secure. Now, this is where it gets really freaking scary. Is it like, you just know, ow! <laughs> See? Sorry, you don't know <laughs> when it's going to jab that needle in there and pull it out to insert the cannula. So it's, it's like, <sighs> just take some deep breaths, which I obviously wasn't doing. It really doesn't hurt <laughs> that much. Um, it's just a little pinch, depending of course where you put it, but I was just a little, a little scared, okay? Now, what you're gonna wanna do after this is there's a little window on the pod, as you can see in this image, and you should be able to see that the cannula is inserted into the skin. If it's not, you're gonna have to pull the pump out or the pod out and redo things because we don't wanna have a bent or dysfunctional cannula in your body because we need the insulin to be able to go in there. 
I can't see mine. <laughs> um, I will probably go look in a mirror in a few minutes, but want to make sure that you check that window or have somebody else check the window. You will see a pink color at the top of the pod and that confirms that the cannula was inserted properly. Ah! And then it's gonna be really loud. Now what it's asking me to do is connect my CGM. So blurry. Whatever, you get the idea. So I'm going to have to, uh, since I already have one inserted, I need to know what the transmitter code is and I do have that in my app. So I'm gonna go into the Dexcom app and use that transmitter code and place it into the PDM for my Omnipod. All right, it's connecting to my transmitter. I will check back in once it's there. Very exciting. I will say Omnipod is fabulous at setup. I think it's a super easy setup. It's a very user-friendly pump to get started on and I think it's super chill. So that's something that's worth noting is it's a very quick and easy setup and I really appreciate that. And just for your awareness, there is an Omnipod 5 app that allows you to control the pods through that app, but it is only available for Android systems and not iOS, which really stinks. Uh, but I think once that gets started and is more widely available to people, that will be a game changer. Because I really hate carrying around the PDM. It's partially why I love tubed pumps is because I can just, they're just attached to me all the time. Whereas I am always losing the PDM. Like I lose my phone basically. So I think it's just really helpful to just have one device and that would be, be my phone because I have limited pocket space. So just FYI, that is in the works. But if you are an iOS or an Apple user, then you will need to use the standalone PDM in order to bolus and and make changes to your pod from your phone and, and replace that PDF. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch the modes now that it's connected to my Dexcom sensor. I did not need to put in a sensor code, so that's great. Um, it just automatically connected. Don't judge me, I'm going up because I treated a low with a little bit, little bit too much gusto. To switch to automatic mode, I'm gonna go to switch mode, gonna be like, get it together rachel and we're just gonna press switch and it is my understanding that the first i think it's 24 or 48 hours it is gonna get to know me from what i've been told by trainers as well as people wearing the system the first one to two days are gonna be a bit uh you're gonna be running a bit more above target maybe than you would like to don't throw out your omnipod pdm or anything like that that is normal because it's just getting to know what's going on in your bod once we get past that period it will start to be a little bit more aggressive with with its correction and bolusing. Be aware of that. Don't make any changes or anything during this time. Try to pick a, I, I tried to make sure that I was done with my period and I was just in a good place to maybe run a little bit more above target than I'd like to be just to give the, the Omnipod a, a better shot at things. But I will check in as week progresses and let you know my thoughts.